Welcome to PDMA Corporation, home of the MC Emacs. I'd like to thank you for joining us as we continue along in our presentation series. My name is Todd Gunderson, the Vice President of Sales and Marketing, and as well we have with us Mr. Noah Bethel, the Vice President of Product Development. Hello from sunny Tampa, Florida. Yep, Noah, here's uh, again our, our customers have come through and, and they've given us a tremendous case study and this says that Gearbox Issues, do we do a lot of that work? We don't, and this is so, it's so exciting about this case study is it's taking it not just from within the motor, but actually down the, the machine train to an uh, actual gearbox. Yeah, and this is giving us an opportunity to really dive into the demodulation portion of our software. So let's move in, and, and here's just kind of like, we know demodulation for finding pole pass frequency and the mechanical speed of the of the rotor, but there's a lot more going on, isn't there? There are. Those first two you mentioned, they're great for rotor eval, for eccentricity, but all the other things that are available, in, you know, as far as a spectral peak in the demodulation can be utilized for machine train analysis. Right, so fan issues, belt, compressor, pump, gear, balance, misalignment, all of those you can find with a little bit of knowledge in the demod section of the... Uh, so here's our motor. And this is what we're going to discuss today. It's a pretty decent sized, uh, 200 horsepower, 460 volt. Now, once again, look on the bottom, 48 slots, 36 bars. This individual has a good communication with its repair shop. How does that help us out? You know, it's funny. This is another thing we don't see much of is the full birth certificate of the motor. And knowing that information allows us to zero in on certain anomalies that we couldn't before without that information. So this is a, an actual picture. So this motor is, is driving uh, a, like a 20-foot shaft, and it's driving a fan. So this is where we start to get, gain knowledge of the, what's the process. Well, this is a fan-driven uh, motor. Right, and that 20-foot shaft would be a balanced nightmare for, a, for you know, an untrained organization. But that, that's, that's a big factor in this. So here's our demodulation test taken in 2015. Uh, we see that we, we put band alarms around the, the uh, pull pass and the mechanical, but there's some energy spikes in here. There what? really is, and I, you want to say hats off to the team for establishing band alarms around pull pass and speed because we don't see that very often, and that allows them to you know identify those speeds, and, and, and again, misalignment and balance is going to raise those. But you're right. The energy that exists in between, we need to find out what those peaks are. So, and this is kind of, this case study is really showing the growth of an individual as he goes through uh, weeks and months with the technology, what's working, what can we do a little better with it. Um, so, we go into our next one here. Now we're in September. Uh, the, the technician just got back from a, a reliability meeting where he was with other team members. And one of the team members said, you know, before I take a test, I always do an inrush just for a process review. Right, and this is a great indication of torsional loading from a motor. Uh, our customers have been really feeding us good information that they see when that modulation increases. It, if it's not for a reason of load, we need to find out why. Right, and we know it's fan driven, so there may be some other things non-load related occurring here. So... We talked, uh, this is the load variance. We have load shifting going on here. What is this telling us? Similar to that last, you know, graph that you show with the, with the changing process, you know, amplitudes. Th this is actually uh, looking at peak variance in the load, giving a, an actual quantitative indication of the torsional changes. And, and drastic changes in these numbers were seen over the, over the testing. Right, so we went from 2 to 9. So we have, there's something awry here. Absolutely. If it stayed at two the whole time, not a big deal. And two may be large, you know, variances compared to other motors. But in this situation, you know, a factor of four times higher. So we go back to our DMOD, and now you see there's band alarms here because, remember now, this is a growth of the individual doing the testing. There were no band alarms before. But after attending some more conferences and maybe uh, getting some maybe training tra training or, or reading a tip of the week or looking at another case study that we put online uh, they become a little more understanding and you can see here we've had a 1700 percent increase in one of these peaks in the spectrum that's a huge number that demands someone to look into that we just need to know what that peak is so who would they talk to 
Well, we always recommend contacting tech support, you know, uh, other experts in the, in the industry. Uh, the vibration group would be a good group to talk to. Um, you know, we're dealing with pull pass more and slip across the air gap more than just a straight mechanical speed. But tech support should be able to provide a lot of information on the calculations of, sh of speeds around, you know, bearings and fans and things like that. And that's always a good start. And so in this case here, the technician got with his vibration team and they worked out, okay, well, at 8 hertz is the intermediate shaft speed. Uh, you have blade pass out here. You have shaft outer speed. So, and along with your pole pass and your mechanical speed, so they were able to talk to their uh, vibration technicians and find and and put band alarms around there. So, kudos to them. And so they had all that information, and lo and behold, uh, this is what happened. They had the the gearbox was removed from service, and they found out that uh, upon the initial installation, there was a slight misalignment, causing it to load and unload. So once they repaired that or fixed that, it was back to normal. And what if they wouldn't? You know, not seeing that would have resulted in this uh, gearbox very likely eventually tearing itself up, but much more expensive right. uh, endeavor and not scheduled most of the time. Right, and, and here's the inrush startup current post repair, so you can see that we're back to normal. There's no real wide amperage uh, swings there. Before it was 30 amps, now it's maybe 2 amps, 3 amps. Our demodulation post repair are back into the uh, normal levels, right, where we're down below 1 again. So yeah, we're at from 7 to 0.7. 7 to 0.7, so a significant drop there. Um, Here's what we came up with, right? So the, the technician didn't even know there was a gearbox change that occurred in the plant. So some things that we should think about, and uh, you brought this up many times through this presentation, learn the process. What's being tested? Yeah, what is the math behind those peaks? Without knowing what those peaks are, it's hard to start directing the attention to it. And when you say the the middle of the night gearbox change without everybody knowing it that that's a big as you as the second bullet points out you know, the communication has to be throughout right. the you know the anyone involved with that asset needs to have that information to make you know the right call right and and you do that by attending conferences and getting with your peers and talking about the problems that exist at your plant and how are other people tackling those problems your own uh, lunch and learns or if other vendors are coming in uh, sharing new technology or new information, that's always important. Uh, and then lastly here, get with reliability team members like your vibration team or other elements of the reliability team and, and let's get some of these uh, drive gear teeth, load gear teeth, fan blades, pump vanes, pulley diameter. These are all important, are they not? Absolutely, and the vibration group has been tracking them for a, a number of years and so that correlation can be can be a, a very nice tool, especially when things change uh, over seasons. Like, you know, it, it may be showing bad in one season, but not the next. Correlation with your other technologies will help to, to s get the right, the proper severity on that. And the last thing that we'll bring up is we talked about this. Uh, we're both ex-military, both ex-Navy. One was a uh, surface myself, and one was underneath the water in a submarine, which would be uh, Noah Bethel. Uh, but we always talked about, before we assumed the watch, we had to do what? We had to do a turnover. Right. And you got to go and look through the plant and s look at the tag out logs and look and see if there's maintenance being done on the facility or on some process in the in the plant uh, before you could even assume the watch. Absolutely. A proper turnover was absolutely required or you'd be drugged back to do it again. R yeah, you'd be pulled out of your rack or wherever you were, wherever you're trying to do. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> uh, so once again, as always, we appreciate your time. And if you guys have uh, an additional uh, that you'd like to share a case study with us or a tip of the week or any other type of ideas, we will be more than happy to entertain that. You can give us a call at the number on the screen. And as always, we appreciate your time, and please stay safe out there.